Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. After the global nightmare that was World War II, the United States of America inevitably became a nuclear superpower when it destroyed a couple of cities in Japan using its newly developed atomic bombs. And because of that, it became clear to the rest of the world how technologically superior the Americans have been compared to any other powerful country when it comes to warfare. And regardless of whether they were affiliated with the Allies or the Axis, these nations grew very wary of the possibility that the US would be the next one to attempt to lord over everyone else using its technological edge and making seriously devastating military weapons. So because of this and many other reasons, the USSR, once an ally of the US during the war, became a fierce and competitive rival after the global conflict was won. The relations between the two countries had gone cold and it became crucial for the Soviets to prove to the whole world that they were just as strong a force to be reckoned with and that others should also tremble at their might. This meant that the Soviet Union had to immediately catch up to the US, sparking a nuclear arm race between the two countries. So for the next decade, the Soviets aggressively pursued nuclear research, determined to create nuclear weapons more powerful and destructive than anything the US had come up with. And so the USSR detonated its first nuclear bomb in 1949, and from then on, they managed to test over 80 nuclear devices. And among the nuclear bombs that the Soviets detonated was the infamous Tsar Bomba, a monstrous weapon that was so powerful and destructive that even the Soviets made sure not to unleash it at its full capacity. So what is the Tsar Bomba? The official name of the Tsar Bomba is the Soviet RDS-220 hydrogen bomb. It is also popularly referred to as the Kuzina Mats or Kuzma's mother. This monstrous nuclear device was created by Soviet scientists at the urging of the first secretary, Khrushchev, who had made a public declaration to display Soviet technology in its full force. And it truly lived up to his expectations as the Tsar Bomba earned the title of being the most powerful nuclear bomb to be detonated to date. The Russian physicists designed the Kuzkina Mat as a three-stage bomb with a yield of 50 megatons. That's around 1,500 times greater than the combined energy produced by the Little Boy and Fat Man atomic bombs, which were dropped and detonated by the Americans on Japan. But originally, however, they intended to build the Tsar Bomba with a maximum yield of 100 megatons. And theoretically, they would have achieved this by layering every stage of the bomb with uranium-238. Had they chosen chosen to go in this direction, the bomb would have been around 3,000 times more massive than the two bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But scientists thought testing a nuclear device with this much power was far too dangerous, duh, and had the potential to cover the northern territory of the USSR with a nuclear fallout. Moreover, it would be difficult for a plane to carry and deliver a bomb of this size to its intended destination. And even if that was accomplished, it would be deemed a suicide mission as it would be highly unlikely that its carrier would have enough time to establish a safe distance before the bombs exploded. Hence, in order to limit the scope of the fallout it would cost, it is believed that the Tsar Bomba was layered with lead instead of uranium. Doing so would have significantly weakened the power of the nuclear reaction and would explain why the bomb yielded only half of its theoretical capacity. So the Soviet Union decided to put the RDS-220 hydrogen bomb to the test on the 30th of October in 1961. A Soviet Tu-95 bomber plane was selected to carry the colossal nuclear device from the airfield in Kola Peninsula all the way north to the target location in the archipelago of Novaya Zimlia, several miles away from the village of Severny. The massive bomb it carried had a diameter of 7 feet and weight heavier than 27 tons. In an effort to ensure the survival of the two bomber planes, it was decided that the Tsar Bomba would be deployed via a big parachute from the height of around the 34,000 feet. And only when it reaches the height of 13,000 feet would the bomb be detonated, at which point the planes would already be 30 miles away. Now, while this is typically a safe distance, it was determined that the plane had nothing more than 50% chance of surviving the blast. So at 11.32 in the morning Moscow time, the Tsar Bomba detonated forming a fireball that exploded up to 5 miles in a mushroom cloud that rose as high as 40 miles. The flash of the explosion was visible over 600 miles away, and while it must have been a jaw-dropping sight to see, the aftermath of setting off the nuclear bomb was utterly catastrophic. According to sensor data gathered from the blast, the blast wave of the Tsar Bomba was so intense that it orbited the Earth three times. Consequently, this knocked off radio communications for an hour or so. The explosion also caused significant damage 
damage to various structures within Soviet districts situated several hundreds of miles away from Ground Zero. And as for the village of Severny, which was more than 30 miles away from the blast zone, nothing was virtually left. The bomber plane managed to survive the explosion, but not before plummeting more than 3,000 feet toward the Earth. But fortunately, the pilot was able to regain control of the plane. Another fortunate thing was that the Tsar Bomba's fireball did not reach the ground. As such, the nuclear fallout was not as massive as the bomb's colossal yield, and radiation it produced was unexpectedly low. Now, as bad as this bomb was, it was not the last time that the USSR or any other country tested nuclear weapons. However, the Tsar Bomba was certainly the first and last time a nuclear bomb of that scale was ever detonated, at least so far. And it's fortunate that a bomb twice as powerful as that was not the one used. And really, why do we need such a destructive weapon? I mean, is there ever a scenario where, where a country's thinking, you know what, I just want to obliterate an entire country off the face of the planet and then go home and sleep pretty well at night. And just as I said that, I realized, yeah, there are actually people crazy enough to use something like this or something stronger than this. So it is truly scary that a bomb as powerful as this does really exist. And right now, living in this crazy world, who knows? Am I the only one who has this impending sense of doom uh, about, about the whole world right now? Let me, let me know if you have that same feeling in the comments. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.